Allah, the exalted, instilled in the Quran many stories of uh, the previous nations. And many of these stories highlighted or addressed the nature of the ancient yet perpetual conflict between the truth and falsehood. The truth that is divinely supported and falsehood that is commonly adopted by tyrants, oppressors, and arrogant people. And one of the stories in the Quran which was addressed the most is the story of Musa alayhi salatu wassalam and Fir'aun. And the things that were emphasized on in the story of Musa alayhi salatu wassalam and Fir'aun as well as other messengers with their people are things like speaking about the sunan of Allah, the way Allah Azza wa Jal runs the universe. One of these sunan is that the followers of the truth, the believers will definitely be tested. As Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ did people believe they will be left saying or claiming they have believed without being tested? For indeed, we have tested, we have tried those who were before them. And this is the very thing that happened to the followers of Musa and Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. To the point that they became so terrified that Allah Azza wa Jal commanded them to conceal themselves. Perform their worship in secret. Commanding Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his followers وَجْعَلُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ قِبْلَةً Take for your people for your followers, places of worship. So that, as the scholars of tafsir say, so that you can secretly perform your worship in them. Another fact is that throughout the time, the common practice of tyrants, of oppressors, is that they wrong the believers and the followers of the truth. Whether that in the form of imprisoning them, torturing them, or even killing them under the pretext of they are corruptors. They influence people's minds. What did Fir'aun say to his people? Daruni aqtul Musa. Let me kill Musa. Why? What's his justification? Under what pretext do you want to do that? Inni akhafu an yubaddila deenakum aw an yudhira fil ardi al fasad. I fear that he will change your faith, your beliefs. Or would cause corruption to spread, to spread in the land. There is a different justification. Labeling differs from time to time depending on the situation. Corruptors, extremers, this and that. There's always a reason, a label they stick so they can wrong and oppress the followers of the truth.
Another important point is that the consequence, the end of these tyrants is destruction. Allah says about Fir'aun and his followers, فَأَخَذْنَاهُ وَجُنُودَهُ فَنَبَذْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمْ فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الظَّالِمِينَ So we seized him and his soldiers and we threw them into the sea, drowned them. So see, O Muhammad, at the consequence or the end of the wrongdoers. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً And this is the seizure of your Lord when He seizes the communities or towns when they are oppressors. Wrongdoers. So the consequence of oppression, the consequence of tyrants, is destruction. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed Fir'aun and his followers, and the people of Nuh and the people of Lut, and many others who disbelieved. Allah Azza wa Jal made this one of his sunan is that he will destroy anyone who follows suit anyone who does that to the believers and the followers of the truth during times of hardship during tests and trials the believers are instruct, instructed to utilize certain means as a way out of these hardships and trials. One of the most important is salah, coupled with sabr, patience. The instruction from Allah to Musa was, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ Maintaining this connection between your heart and your Creator helps you remain firm on faith. This, why, this was why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was obliged to pray Qiyamul al-layl. Why? It strengthens the bond between you and your Creator. makes your heart reassured with the support of Allah Azza wa Jal and patience. قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ اسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُوا Seek the aid of Allah Azza wa Jal by means of being patient. And Allah Azza wa Jal coupled both these in one verse. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ All you who have believed, take patience and salah a means of aid and support, meaning during times of difficulties, relying on Allah Azza wa Jal. We're instructed to truly read and sincerely rely upon Allah Azza wa Jal, and not just verbally. And this is what Musa told his people, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا If you truly have believed in Allah, then rely upon Him. Rely upon Him. He is sufficient. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever relies upon, upon Allah, then he suffices him. Allah is sufficient for him. And finally, dua. 
when Musa instructed his people to rely upon Allah, they immediately said, Ala Allahi tawakkalna. And then re they resorted to dua. Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lil qawmi zalimin wa najjina bi rahmatika min al qawmi al kafirin. O oh Allah, do not make us objects of trial to the wrongdoing people and save us by your, mercy, by your mercy from the disbelieving people. Important means which a believer should utilize during times of hardship, especially those calling to the path of Allah The story of Musa and Fir'aun, as I mentioned in the first Utbah, is one of the stories which was mentioned the most in the Quran and in different parts uh, of the Quran, Allah Azza wa mentioned it at times summarized and at times at length. But what concerns me in the second khutbah is to address something that is re relevant to an upcoming event. Ashura. On that day, the major event took place. The confrontation between truth and falsehood took place. The promise of Allah Azza wa Jal was fulfilled. Allah says in the Quran, فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَى إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُ when the two parties were facing one another, they could see one another. The followers of Musa said, we're overtaken. The reason they said that is that in some of the verses, the description of the followers of Fir'aun is that they, the end of them was not be, could not be seen. Because when Fir'aun wanted to go after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his followers, فَأَرْسَلَ فِي الْمَدَائِنِ He called throughout all the cities, gathering people, not just his official army, he gathered everyone. So the description was that that army, the end of that army could not be seen in the horizon. Compared to the followers of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So when this happened, the army of Fir'aun reached and they have reached to see Musa and his followers alayhi salatu wasalam. The followers of Musa said, we're overtaken. Nothing, no more land to go from here. And behind us is an enemy who is adamant to kill us, to finish us. Qala kalla. Musa said, no. What do you mean, no? In human scale, it is impossible. But Musa was not dealing with the event using the human scale. He said, Inna ma'iya Rabbi, Sayyidin. I have my Lord with me. He will guide me. He will find a way out for me. I don't deal according to this scale. I have something else. I have something better. I have my Lord with me. He will guide me. فَأَوْحَيْنَا فَ This letter is used, as the scholar said, indicating that the response came immediately. فَأَوْحَيْنَا So we immediately inspired Musa. And اِضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ Strike the sea with your stick. What was the result? فَانْفَلَقْ It parted. فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالطَّوْدِ الْعَظِيمِ And each portion of the two was like a huge great mountain. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Look at the reassurance at the second 
in the heart of Musa and the followers of the truth. When they saw this miracle take place before their own eyes. What happened? Musa alayhi salatu wasalam passed on a dry soil as if it was never touched with water. وَأَزْلَفْنَا ثَمَّ الْآخَرِينَ And we brought forward the others. The others is Fir'aun, refers to Fir'aun and his soldiers. And then as soon as Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his followers went out, kun fayakun. So we are dealing with Allah who possesses, who controls, who is the all capable, all powerful, almighty, all exalted subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sea went back to its normal situation and it drowned and destroyed Fir'aun and his followers. ثُمَّ الْآخَرِينَ And then we drowned the others. Beautiful lessons. Lesson number one, do not weaken. إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ We're overtaken. Remember, you're followers of the truth. And the truth is divinely supported. You have Allah. So fear not. Grieve not. Doubt not. Versus Musa. Qala kalla. Without any reluctance. Without even thinking. He immediately responded to them. No. No, no, no. What you're saying is not true. Think good of your Lord during times of difficulties. He said, no, I have my Lord. How? I don't know. But he, he is able. He is capable. He will as he promised the believers. Point three. Always remember that regardless of how long the period is when the believers are oppressed, the consequence is and will always be for the believers and the followers of the truth. Musa said to his people, Inna al arda lillah, Inna al arda lillah, yurithuha man yasha'u min ibadih, wal aqibatu lil muttaqi. This earth, this land belongs to Allah and He enables whomever He wishes from His slaves to inherit it. And the final good consequence is for the pious. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal took Musa and his followers alayhi salatu was salam from this hardship into the land or to the land of security, just like he rescued them, he will rescue the believers during all times and eras. So fear not. Don't be grieved when you see the extent of oppression the believers are going through in our time. It's a test. And Allah Azza wa Jal will grant victory to the believers when the right time comes, when they become deserving. We need to change ourselves. Musa alayhi salatu was salam fasted that day in gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fasted that day. And he instructed his followers radiallahu anhum to fast that day. And he encouraged his ummah 
at large to fast Ashura. And he said, and this is reported by Al Bukhari and Muslim, he said, fasting the day of Ashura expiates, wipes out the sins of the previous year. The believers, the companions, radiallahu anhum, came to the Prophet, and this narration is in the book of Imam Muslim, and informed him that this is a day glorified by the Jews. So, as his common practice was, alayhi salatu wasalam, differing from the people of the book in acts of worship, he said, if I live long enough to reach next year, meaning Ashura of next year, I will fast the ninth with Ashura. Ashura means the tenth, the tenth of Muharram, right? Which is the following, which is this coming Monday. He said, if I live long enough to reach Ashura of next year, I will fast the ninth with it. So it is recommended to fast, as the scholar said, Fasting Ashura is in three different ways. You either single it out, just Ashura, or add a day before or after, either the ninth or the eleventh, or fast all three together, nine, ten, and eleven. The ninth is Sunday, the tenth is Monday, and the eleventh is Tuesday. It's highly rewarded, rewardable to fast this day don't miss out on this season a season of expiation of a full year of our wrong deeds or misdeeds allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al qawm al kafirin